Hello, hello everybody. It's uh, Darren here and um, I had a bit of issues this morning. Let me just turn on. I've been trying to figure out how to get this second camera set up properly and um, I think it's okay and you can kind of see a few of the um, the recording uh, gear sort of on top of me as well. So uh, this is really just a, a quick, uh, well hoping it's going to be a quick little sketch but um, a couple of these materials arrived for me in the mail. I didn't even know the mail arrives on a on a Saturday, but apparently it does. Um, so I had uh, a couple of samples sent over through um, uh, by Etcher, and I've been working with these guys for a little while now. And I know there's been a um, you know there's been a few questions as to you know what what their sketchbooks are like, things like that. I have used one of their, well, I've got a couple of their sketchbooks um, over here. And uh, yeah, I can go through a few of the pages and things like that. But I thought I'd do a really quick unboxing. These were sent to me for free. And I know some of you are interested in getting your own sketchbooks. Um, I also make my own sketchbooks. This is one that I, I put together. Um, I've got a couple actually. So this one, and uh, this is the second attempt. And the first attempt is, is this one here which is a bit of a, a bit more of a shoddy sort of job. Obviously, you can see the duct tape here, but you know what? It has, it has held together amazingly. So I thought I'd go through, um, yeah, just the unboxing of these two products. Um, basically, it's the perfect sketchbook, which is uh, the same as this one. I'm going to see if they've changed it in any way. Uh, this is the one they sent me a few months ago, so I don't know uh, if they've, they've, um, Fiddled around with it a bit, and I've also got this little set of black uh, graphic pens, which I'm pretty keen to try out actually. So um, we'll go through a little bit, and uh, I hope the stream works okay. Uh, let me know everything uh, if you can hear okay. We've got Loretta Berg uh, Sampson from uh, Facebook. We've also got we've got a few people watching. Let me know if you're if you're if you're on. It's a bit of a um, bit of a, a last minute thing. I was wondering whether to do this or not, but I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. Um, and I, uh, there's Yvette. So Yvette Paul on uh, on YouTube. I've also got Shanolan. Um, how are you going, Shanolan? And uh, must be a must be um, it's about six p.m., seven p.m. for you. And um, <clears throat> this picture, a pretty cool uh, little photo is a uh, photo of a house that I um, saw yesterday. So I went to go visit my grandma. It was like the first time that I actually managed to see her um, following all this lockdown shenanigans here in Melbourne. So yeah, visiting my grandma and I, and I um, stumbled by this house and I thought it was really cool. So I took a photo of it and I thought maybe I'll, I'll uh, do a stream of it sometime. So because this is a bit unplanned, I haven't uploaded this reference photo or, or anything like that. I'll, I can do it afterwards. Um, or, or actually, I, I, I may be able to do it now. It just depends whether you guys are actually watching along and and uh, and following along to it. Um, but yeah, let me know if you want me to upload the reference photo. I can I can do it like during the stream as well to um, to Facebook and a link. I've also got Cracker Jack from uh, Georgia. Here you going, Cracker Jack? I haven't. I've. Uh, I remember you were in one of my other streams, probably. I think a couple of months ago. Um, yeah, maybe you've been in others since then, but I, I haven't seen you in the chat. So uh, welcome. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, it looks like it's about six six to eight p.m. for. A few other guys. Um, okay, uh, so like I said, I haven't been paid to do this. It's just a couple of products that um, they do send me from from time to time uh, to put their um, link in the group, and um, I do use some of their products as well. And I, uh, the main, the only two that I um, that I really use is their sketchbooks. So I've got a couple of their sketchbooks. I've got this uh, perfect. It's what they call their perfect sketchbook. Um, which is basically this in a kind of, um, let me just, let me just get the stream across. Hope you can see. Okay. The weather's quite nice today. So I really want to head outside later and do something. Um, so, okay. Look, that Shanolan says definitely upload 
Okay, so just give me a second. I will upload it to. I'll just upload it to YouTube now, and also to Facebook. If anyone's watching, are there's a few watching on Facebook as well. Um, I'm not terribly organized with these with <laughs> with um with these things at times, and you notice you notice even when I stream, I'll have the reference photo kind of prepared you know, a couple of days, one or two days earlier, and I'm definitely getting better at it. So, um, yeah, bear with me, bear with me. I'll, I'll upload it now to the discussion sections of the event on Facebook and I'll just do it. Uh, I'll just make a post as well. Shinolan on the community and uh, the, the community tab on YouTube. So if you want to, yeah, if you want to go in and, and, uh, <clears throat> and find it, just give me a second. For some reason, my browsers are just running really slow today, and it was taking me a, quite a long time to to get into the stream to just click onto um, just even click onto things. So um, I'm hoping like it doesn't stuff up or anything uh, during the stream. But you know, let's give it a go. All right, so I've uploaded to YouTube. Let me just uh, paste the link here uh Shinolan. so yeah it's just in that community tab so i'll actually pin it to the to the stream uh well let me try to do that pin that and then i'll do it as well to facebook for anyone watching on facebook if you go to the event um and then you click on the uh, discussions tab you'll be able to find the reference photo okay so normally I stream a couple of times a week and I'm, I'm you know, more more planned. But um, yeah, if you want to follow along with me, go, go ahead. It's it's just something I wanted to do this sketch anyway in the morning. And I thought I'll flick on the flick on the camera and um, go through some of these materials that came from me in the mail as well. So let's go ahead and get cracking. And um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, if you have any questions, if you're just watching along at home, uh, let me know in the chats and I'll get back to you. We've also got Peggy, uh, Peggy Burt from Georgia. Good to see you, Peggy. And I think you were in the last one, weren't you? Let me know. Uh, there's some familiar names, certainly some familiar names that I hope to get to know some of you more. Um, yeah, hope to get to know some of you more as time goes by. I haven't been streaming for all that long, so, you know, I think I'm getting better at it. But, um let me just just give me one moment. I'm gonna quickly open up the other one just in case I got chats because I've got uh, it's just got a few windows open. It's a bit of a bit of a mess. Just so that I can see everything. Also got Kate from Geelong. How are you going, Kate? And um, righto, righto, righto. So um, yeah, let's go. I'm gonna go open up. Uh, some of these materials and um, basically the the sketchbook here the perfect sketchbook. It's just um, The same as this one. I've been using this for all my lives um, And I've made a couple I've made this new sketchbook as well just from my other paper um, For anyone out there who's a sci-fi fan, you know, this is a it's it's an aliens um, Alien reference. It's an old t-shirt that I used to wear when I was about 19 maybe 20, 19, 20, 21, um, used to have like silver, silver outlining to it, but now it's gone all gray. So I've just take, found that shirt and cut it out and stuck it onto the, to the sketchbook that I made. So <clears throat> it's got roughly around the same pages as this other one. So this will be good. I thought it'd be a nice little touch, you know, I've seen, I'm not sure if some of you guys, um, watch James Gurney, if you know James Gurney, he's like a, another guy who does, um, sketches and a sketchbook on on youtube it looks like he, he makes his own sketchbooks as well but he uses uh, menus and things like that from restaurants that he goes to so i thought that was really cool that he has some kind of um yeah some kind of like personalized um sketchbooks that he puts together um <clears throat> to america to america one says what size is the sketchbook so both of them are around a4 size so this this one um the etcher one is a4 size so it's uh what is it in in uh, inches 11.4 by 8.3 inches that's what it says on the the um little packet there the 
<clears throat> this one here that I made, it's pretty, it's really similar, but it's uh, slightly smaller than A4, A4 size, the sheets, because um, I've kind of just torn out the sheets from a whole uh, full imperial size sheet of paper, which I think is 76 by 56 centimeters. So <clears throat> yeah, I hope that kind of answers your, your question. And um, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm kind of, Oh, crap. Um, on, on, on for a bit. So they come in these, come in these plastic packs. I might have to get a some scissors or something to open it. And I think it's, I think it's. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of of plastic, but I think with um, watercolor paper, you just got to be a bit more careful with the packaging because. If there's any moisture and it gets onto the paper, I've had that happen when uh, I've had some paper delivered to me once. It, uh, yeah, it just ruins the paper. Oops. Okay, so it kind of, you know, just opens up. Look at me, I, I just had my hand on the wrong one. So, let's have a look. So it's got a, got a yeah. I'm not exactly sure how much they, they cost. I think they come in bundles. So you, you get like three of them in a set. <clears throat> so, it's very well packaged, that's for sure. There's another another little layer of plastic here. Um, so I'm just going to have a look at it and just compare and see if there's anything that they've changed. Um, I really like design of these they have a little pocket at the back as well which you can store loose uh, sheets of paper um and okay looks pretty much the same it's uh it's got a nice little cover on it like that which i'll click out um it's pretty much the same as uh, this one here that i've already finished up um so I'd say the paper is a, a really, um, there's no uh, sort of creaminess to it all. It's it's pretty white. And uh, yeah, I reckon I'll just, I'll use the first page of it to do this sketch. Um, and it will be similar, kind of similar to the style I've used for these other ones. Where is it? I had the page, uh, page turned to it before, I think. Where is it? It's somewhere in here. It's hard to find the other. Here we go. Something like this. <clears throat> so, yeah. Now these are their graphic hand sets. So I'm just gonna open it up and look. See more plastic. Righto. So I'll just put this one away first. <clears throat> I'm just clearing my throat in the morning. Um. Okay, cool. So looks like they've got 16 pens, uh, 16 pen set. And uh, normally, normally, as you guys know, if you watch my my videos, you use either these ones here, um, which is these pigment liners, Stabler pigment liners, or use these three pens. Mainly these three pens, these Uniball eye pens. Um, so this, to me, I mean, this is. I mean, really sport for choice. It's kind of overkill, to be honest. So I'm going to go through and um, and uh, let's and we'll try to do this one in um, in these. Oh, it's cool. And it actually opens up. So it's as well as a box. It's a kind of holder for the pens. So they come in, uh, yeah, 0.5 to 1.0 for the uh, pigment liners. So they, I think they must be pretty similar then to. Let's have a look at what they. Yeah, cool. So they're, they're pretty similar to these um, Stadler ones here uh, that I've got in terms of the, the tip is like a felt, kind of a felt tip, which is kind of lends to a more forgiving line. Um, as I've talked about before with those Uniball ink liners that I use, they tend to create quite a harsh, sharp line on the page. I, I like that style. 
and that's why I, I use it. And um, but I know for people who are starting out uh, drawing, or even later on, uh, you, you know, I find that these these are a bit more forgiving, and they come in a larger variety of nibs as well. So apparently, these are waterproof as well, which is good. Waterproof and light fast. There's some other ones here which are interesting, and I got. Yeah, they just have slightly different tips. So, turn over the box. It might sort of go through a bit of the... Yeah, so if you can see there, it kind of shows you which pen makes which sort of um, which sort of mark. So, yeah, I might grab a bit of scrap paper. Just have a bit of a play around. I always do this when I get new bits of art supplies and things like that. Just to... Have a bit of a play around with them first so that you're not trying to figure out what marks they make on the page when you actually get started but if you have any questions uh, just let me know there's uh the etcher journal so a two american one is asking the etcher journal book is that cold press yeah it's cold press cold press paper and yeah i think they you know a lot of them come in cold press most of the ones on the market they i've never seen you know i've never seen a sketchbook that has both cold press and hot press paper in it i think that would be a really cool idea if if someone put put that together um yeah maybe maybe half of the paper from it cold press or half hot press but uh, i find with hot press paper it's pretty good for for things like uh, landscapes or when you're doing you're trying to get soft washes in with with hot pressed paper i do find because of the smoothness of it uh, i mean this bit of paper here is yeah it's pretty much hot press and so when you go in there and you add a bit of color it dries it, yeah it can dry kind of inconsistently in areas so um i don't know if i can kind of highlight that if i just put a bit of color here just sort of paint like that you'll see um you can get kind of blotchiness in areas if you're not careful um and the paint kind of just sits on top of the the paint sits on top of the paper can you it sort of pools in, in little areas like that so i find with hot press paper it just tends to lend towards uh, more detail and you have to accept that it does this kind of um effect i, I find the yeah, it, it, it dries a little bit more patchy, a little bit more inconsistent. You get blooms, so it's really kind of doing a, a bit of a bloom over there. Um, yeah, so let's give this a try. Hmm. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pull all of them out. Maybe just a few. So that's the point. This is the zero point zero five. Okay. Yeah. So they they feel pretty similar to the um, pigment liners that I've got. The, the nibs, though, are really interesting. They're quite pointy. I mean, they really stick out compared to these Stabler ones that I got from memory anyway. So that's the, this is the 0.5. Oh, actually, they're kind of similar. That's all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it does feel like a kind of needle-like needle, needle -like tip for these little ones. Let's go up to, let's go up to some of the others. And just for reference as well, with these um, that my, my the pigment liners that I've owned before the uh, these stable ones, I've had them for almost two years, and I use them. Uh, I wouldn't say I use them every day, but I certainly use them every week, and they're still running on pretty well. Um, same goes with the other one that I got the you call it the the um, uniball ones as well. Uh, there we go. So there's a person or. Something like that. Let's draw some some squares, bits and pieces. Okay. Now put the lid on, cap on. I mean, um, they feel really nice. Yeah. Well, so I'll give these a go. Um, so I don't feel a really much difference between these and the Stabler ones. It's just nice that there's so many of them, and Especially, I think, I don't know how much they charge from them, about 50 bucks or so, anywhere, which comes out to, well, there's 16, so, yeah, isn't that about, I'm not sure, maybe math isn't too too great, a few dollars a pen. So, I'm going to try some of these interesting ones. This, is, this one just says 2 millimeter. 
just says two millimeter on it. And the the tip, oh, the tip of the pen is almost like a um, like a really small screwdriver. It's that's strange. Just having a look. Yeah, so it creates this kind of uh, it's like a flat flat kind of line. Yeah, I think this is this would be interesting. Like if you were coloring in the side of something, you can get more of an edge. Uh, it just makes it easier to get more of that ink out. And a different kind of line. So it's like a thicker line. And it has more sharper edges. So that's pretty cool. I mean, if I compare that, if I use this one, like a 0.8 or something like that. Um, yeah, the I mean, the lines are... Yeah, they just don't have that sort of square edge to them. So, yeah, I don't know how I'll use that, but... Um, I was really interested to to try these out. That's why I kind of asked them to send me send me some of them. There's also let's see what else they got. There's another two millimeter one. Well, they've given me maybe this is a mistake. It says two millimeter, two millimeter on both of them. This one, these two, they're the same. Oh, um, no, they're not. I think they put the wrong cap. <laughs> I think they've added the wrong cap on because the back would be there's oh so there's one, two, and three millimeter. So one, two, and three millimeter. I'm just checking. I haven't put the cap on the wrong one, definitely. So let me have a look. So that's definitely that's got to be the two millimeter one. And this is the one millimeter one. So yeah, they've just given me a two millimeter cap instead of a instead of a uh one millimeter cap so this is a pretty sort of thick one as well um it's almost like a, a sharpie or something and um yeah very nice sort of dark lines coming through and uh, really not all that different from the pigment liners that i use but it's nice to have the option to use these and i know there's a few other artists out there there's you know what's his name Finelli, uh ian Finelli, and he does uh, tutorials, line wash tutorials as well, and he uses some of these pens, and you can definitely get in a, a larger variety of lines in there. Um, I mean, it's it's a huge amount, so I, it's you know it's definitely for me it's a bit overkill, but it's nice to have you know different things to work with and to try different nibs, I suppose. Um, this one's a kind of it's almost like a brush nib, yeah, like a very thin brush nib, so you can kind of you can see now, it's very really, really hard to see on camera. Check. You can sort of start out with a thin line like that and then press it down and it gets thicker down the end. So, yeah, that's that one. That says XS, so maybe a small sort of nib. This one is, uh, this is a cool one I wanted to try out. It's a brush, uh, brush pen. So you can kind of, um, yeah, you can get a, a few little different sort of strokes you can start out really small and then kind of move around and get these kind of and I have a brush pen already but um, I don't use it because the um, the nib is just too large um, so I like this one it really allows you to get in quite close um, for details and then you can have these sort of broader strokes like that I don't know if these are refillable and um, they're probably not they're probably not um, kind of shaking it to see if there's anything with his liquid ink. I think there's probably one of those cartridges or something inside. So I reckon once you're done with them, you have to chuck them out. But um, yeah, I do like that brush. I do like that brush pen. Nice. And yeah, these are just, I don't know what these are. I think they're just, oh, they're very similar to the the one that I used before, which is kind of, it's almost between a, it's almost between a nib and a brush pen. So it's, yeah. So you can get small marks and then press down and get a, a larger mark, but it's less flexible as the the brush pen uh, one that I tried out before. So that's pretty cool. Um, I like I said, I'm not sure how I'm going to use these ones, but I'm definitely going to try uh, in the future or even in this demo to to give this a shot and and see how I can implement and use these ones as well. I'm always interested to to uh, do things a bit differently from time to time. Sometimes you get comfort, uh, a bit too comfortable doing the same thing. So, 
Uh, let's have a look. I'm just having a look. There's some questions. Maybe that's why. So two America one says maybe that's why I can't get uh, the spread because I always use cold press or have to experience uh, hot press. Yeah. Oh, do do you mean uh, you're not able to get the the paint to sort of spread out a bit? Uh, spread out a bit more evenly you want to try that yeah you probably want to try cold press hot press it's gonna it's gonna do this sort of thing where you'll get blooms and areas where it will just dry a bit funny and uh, I think it actually looks quite beautiful in a way but it just depends on the effect that you're after I mean this sort of effect here this could look like you know you probably can't see it too well but they could look like um, tree leaves or, or something like that or just a textured kind of area so um, really just depends on the on, on what you're looking for, what kind of effect you're looking for. So, um, righto. And oh, I think um, Doris uh, Doris from uh, Facebook is here as well. Thank you. Doris has sent um, 200 stars on, on Facebook. Thank you so much, Doris. Um, the other day, Facebook enabled enabled uh, stars on my, my stream because I've probably been streaming so much. Uh, <laughs> That they, they might have noticed so just allows people to send donations and things like that so thank you doris um and let me know if you're watching along on facebook um on youtube and you have any questions i'm going to get straight into the the uh demonstration now i think i've talked enough about these uh these pens and um and the and the uh, sketchbook so I'm going to go through this and look if you also if you are thinking of buying something like uh, one of these etch sketchbooks they've because they've actually given me two this was one they gave me many months ago this is a 200 gsm one i'd recommend you get i'd probably recommend you get the 300 gsm one uh, this one um if while the paper is fantastic it's still when you when you're painting it tends to warp and move around a lot so if you're using something like that i would just uh you, if you've got some clips like bulldog clips just clip yeah just clip the, the edges down and if you do that it, it won't move as much but you do get warping and stuff with thicker papers it's better but i never go above 300 gsm or 140 pound paper for, for those of you in the in the states so I find it's just unnecessary. I have used um, 300 pound paper and it's almost like cardboard. And uh, I don't know, I feel like the, I feel like the, the paint sits on top of, you know, too much rather than um, sort of disperses into the paper more. So anyway, um, let's, let's go ahead and get started. And uh, we'll use, I'll use this first page here. I'm gonna move some of this stuff off my table. It's just a mess. It's just a mess. You know? I'm not careful. If I'm really not careful with being tidy and um, things, it can get a bit disorganized. It's just this is why I I really put in an effort to more than others to be to organize things because it's just not my natural inclination at times. So. Um, I'm going to take out the ones that I think I'm going to use the most. So that's a 0 0.5, perhaps a 0 0.2, no, I don't know, maybe like a 0 0.3, 0 0.3 line. Oops, I'm out of there. 0 0.3, 0 0.3 here. Um, that's good. And uh, have a look, maybe the 0 0.8. Maybe 0.8 could work. 0.5, just in case for like little details to see what it's like. And maybe I'll pick out a few others in here once, um, you know, once I get started. So let's give this a go. Now, I've done house portraits before and I made a little course on it and I've done a few uh, demonstrations on, on YouTube and on, um, and on Facebook as well. So, uh, I'll, I'll go through pretty much the same tips and things like that that I that I do go through. But um, yeah, if, if I've missed anything out, just let me know. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna go to point five first, and just have your reference photo up on the screen. If you've got, you know, I know some of you do work from iPads and things like that as well, so you can just uh, have that photograph up on the side. It's good to just have it there so you can um, watch the stream at the same time. Uh, and that's if I can find the, the reference photo. Okay, here it is. 
and this is unedited it's uh well, unless my phone's done some kind of editing on it anyway so um let's go ahead and give this a crack and what i'll do is that i'll check the chats every now and then otherwise i'll never get started so point five now i think what i'll do is i'm gonna just get in the base of the house first and that this is another thing is that this is gigantic tree just coming up the side there and it's obscuring part of the house i want to change that up a bit and uh, maybe just I don't know, I'm, th I'm thinking whether I should move the house a bit more to the right. But you know what I'll do? I, I may actually just reduce that down. Um, I might just reduce this this um, big tree down. And, and, you know, sometimes you've got to do that sort of thing. You've got to work along with what you have. So uh, we'll go ahead and I'll put, sort of divide the, the, the page up first. And what I want to do is find where does the house finish? And it's kind of... You know, if we look at the middle of the page, where the door is, uh, just right in the center of the, the, the reference photo, you can see the uh, front door of the house. So uh, that bottom part of the door, that's halfway through the page, and the bottom of the house is a little bit further down. So I'm going to just, you know, as, a, as a general guide, just put a line here like that. Um, and we've got... You know, the house in the background, we've also got a bit of this foreground here as well, which makes it a little bit trickier. Uh, so it's certainly it's going to feel like we're kind of going into the scene, which is nice and um, be interesting. So one thing I'll do first, uh, I'm going to start probably with this most simple, uh, the most simple shapes to draw in. Now at the front, we got these bricks and things coming up. Um, there's a pile of bricks here and, and here as well and the path now this path is pretty important so we're going to just we're going to try to um, get that in and perhaps start from here just where the door is uh, just underneath the door and i'm just going to draw a little guiding line coming out to around here um, we'll do the same for this side it kind of just this is just a straight um, straight line that runs down from here all the way to the bottom like this Okay, something like that. And uh, we can go ahead and get started on bits and pieces in here. So th there are these bricks on the ground, which are interesting. So we can start, I mean, I'll put in, let's just try, let's put in a few of these. There's some just going across like this mm, here at the front. And uh, that. Try not to make them too perfect. Uh, I always just change the bricks a little bit. And in fact, there's, I mean, uh, in the photograph, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> so there's six in there, but it doesn't matter, right? I mean, we can just put in a, a, another one if we want the path to be bigger or if we've drawn it in, you know, like I have just a, a bit larger than I should have. Um, and then we've got things like these little bricks here, which are, Kind of stacked on top of each other so you know, it's a good way to practice and get in um, shapes just some basic little shapes like that um, and they kind of just you can see them just sort of stacked up behind each other like that I'm not gonna I'm gonna spend too much time on this <clears throat> Let's have a look some more here at the bottom. Okay. Um, now we've got, uh, a, you know, this little bit of coming down like that. It's almost like a step. So, yeah, these are, these are really kind of interesting sort of bricks. And at times you just need to uh, change it up and simplify it uh, for the scene. Otherwise, you'll be here for, for a really long time. Um, and, and that's, you know, sketching is one of those things that it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just looking for uh, some bit of practice. And sometimes you, when you make a mistake, it's good because you actually learn something from it. So let me go. We've got, I might just make this more coming down like vertically on, that's, on this side here that perhaps 
some vertical lines almost looks like it's a step or of some sort coming up and uh yeah this is all done and i'm just using a 0.5 and it's good because i find it's a bit easier especially with these sort of scenes that i haven't done before it's, i find it's a little bit easier when you're using a pigment liner a tip which just basically allows it to be more uh, the line to be a little bit scratchier um there's so many there's all this sort of shrubs and things like that on that side. Let me just, I'll swap to like a 0.3 and see if I can get in a few bits and pieces. You know, we've got some bricks here as well. A few little bricks. Um, the front, like that. I think these, I've, I've done them a little bit too quickly, but what? Let's just, just carry on. I might be able to change it up and add a, a little bit more detail later on. Um, I like these ones a lot better, more confidently sort of drawn in, especially. Um, so we've got, you know, you know, a little indication of this uh, shrub or something here, right? And I'm just drawing a little bit of where it kind of finishes off, sort of around there. And here as well, we've got a bit of negative painting, drawing, I mean. Maybe this is some kind of flower, I don't know what it is. Kind of flower or that kind of thing, and little bits and pieces here. Um, I'm not sure what this plant is called. I think it's some kind of succulent. Um, you see people kind of growing them everywhere. So I'm, I'm just making it very simple. If you can see, I'm not even trying to draw in. Uh, maybe some of these little ones at the front that you can uh, scribble in and that, but a lot of this I'm going to try to get in actually with the watercolors later. So I feel like I just want to be getting in a, a a very basic sketch at first okay um another square block or something like that on top as well there um great and i always like to draw the stuff that's in front first and th there is actually i don't know what this i think this is a bin <laughs> you don't have to put this in if you don't want to but i, I actually um i think i'll just have it in there as a as a shape so that it kind of goes in front of this um goes in front of this uh shrub or whatever and actually it comes up if we look at it comes all the way up here actually um and gets in front of that house so and this bin is is actually a bit um higher so there's a few things in here that we got to change around I'm going to make that bigger i mean these bricks should have been a bit forwards a bit um a bit higher perhaps but um no, not a problem. We'll just uh, just make do with it. Okay, and come down. something like that. That could be the edge of it there. Something down there. Okay. Um, I do want to put in maybe a figure or some people walking around as well. But before I do that, let's let's try to get some dimensions in for the house. So we've added the base of the house there. Um, we know that there's some kind of trailer here in front. Um, so we just want to separate this area from the top of the page, the middle of the page. Um, if we divide this into half, I think what... You can probably divide that into half and use that as a general guiding line. But I think if we just... Yeah, where the rooftop, where the roof of the house is, it's kind of a little bit more than halfway. So it's finishes around about there. So I'm always trying to find ways to simplify it in my mind, um, where these little lines are and things. There is also this other house here on the right hand, uh, not the house, but the um, the roof of the house. Well, so, um, you know, we can put in the, the kind of the top of it. It's just a triangle, something like this. Okay, I'm still trying to figure out exactly where everything goes, but um, under the top of it like this, got that triangular bit, and just draw in that triangle at the back like this. Um, there is an edge of the house that's sort of like there, and then um, comes in more like this, okay. there, and then we've got the uh, side of the house as well, which just... Um, runs down so I, th I think um what we can do is 
separate this off so that we've got the roof of the house like that. Oops, put it in round about here, the roof of the house here. Um, because it kind of ends around about the side of this house like that. And we can just put in the side of the house like this, this little triangular bit there. So, throw that in, that. And there is a kind of a porch, porch area at the bottom here. So there's like steps and things. So we know that kind of finishes around about there. Okay, and then this, here in front, we've got a trailer. So um, I'm going to put in an indication of that, that just draw in. It's almost like a box, uh, kind of like a box shape there. Um, and it really depends how detailed you, you want to get. I know and there are some of you love to, to get in your, your details. So really just spend as much time as you as you want on certain sections, if that makes you happy and you want to get in more, there's no right or wrong way in level of detail. You know, it's uh, things like that. There's like a power uh, pot plant or something like that as well. Okay. And the, the light source is also, uh, it's from left to right. So um, that's going to be lighter on that side. Um, and I might emphasize also the fact that there is some kind of uh, shrub or or thing here behind, or it could be in the trailer even. Be some plants in the trailer. Um, there we go. So it kind of just disappears behind that bin there. Um, so while I'm at it, let's get in the side of this um, side of the house there. And it's an opportunity as well to again just start to put in some of these plants that uh, encroach onto the area. That and uh, sort of go over the house and um, no go I'll continue on and just give me a second just have a look um, to America one says I've used the 230 and applied to watercolor ground for extra support um, seem to work out okay I've used the 230 oh are you talking about are you talking about um, paper, uh, paper weight? That makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Like if you're using heavier paper, you you're, you're going to be able to. Yeah, you're not going to have the, the warping issues. So um, yeah, I, I've never gone. I've never really used. I've used one sheet of it, and I think like a three hundred pound or something like that. But that's about it. So yeah, if it works for you. Just, just go for it. Um, and how's everyone? How are we doing on Facebook? There's a few people watching on on Facebook, um, and also on on YouTube. Am I? Are you? Are you managing to keep up? Okay, and um, you know, just let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm going to check these chats um, periodically just to have a look at how everyone is, everyone's doing. Okay, so. That's part of it. Um, now there's a chimney here as well. So again, just sort of get in that chimney. It's, a, it's just a rectangle with an edge like this, and that comes down. Drawing three-dimensional shapes um, is something that takes a lot of practice, and um, I, I actually, I love doing it. Now, it was difficult for me in the beginning, but it comes down to really just observational stuff as well. So just having a look at how the shapes are. So for this one here, we know that it kind of comes up here. Um, it's like a, it's like a really, what is it? it's an enormous chimney and um, comes down here like that. And then we've got something on top. I don't know what that is, but you know what? I, I'm probably just, I'll just put it in for the sake of it. I don't know. It's kind of an old, old sort of house. It's, um, Really interesting looking house. And then you've got the edge of that chimney, whatever, that comes down like that. So if you look at something like a box, I mean, even something like this, um, if you can draw a box, you can draw a box, then you can draw a chimney, you can draw the side of a house. Um, this here, which is basically a, a triangle, if you can draw a triangle, you can draw that. So if you simplify it down in your mind, it makes it a lot easier rather than looking at it as, you know, oh, look, I've got this 
got this enormous house to draw and there's all this stuff going on and it's quite easy to get overwhelmed even myself at times to um yeah just just um worry too much so that's the side of the house we need that super important because we've got some light um hitting the edge of the um house so i'm going to get in a bit, a bit more of the roof it kind of Points on to that side of the house, and then we've got some darkness in there. That just indicate okay, that um, the edge of the roof also has a bit of a bit like the gutter there, something like that. Um, and then we can do the front of the house now. So um, now looking at this section of the house, the middle bit, it's roughly about the same width as the uh, right hand side here. So I think we're safe to just go. If you've got if you've got enough room here uh, around the same width as this side, um, you're pretty safe to continue on and, and just use that. So we've got three sections and there's two pillars. And what we can do, there's actually some hidden on the side. So I can go and draw a line downwards here. This can be kind of the side of that middle section of the house. Um, you know, on top, there's this kind of roof area that the pillars connect onto like this okay and i'm just going to draw in two lines um, separating it so there's one maybe here and one maybe here okay and um yeah they're just really vertical lines running down like this just to signify these pillars and uh you know they don't have to be perfectly straight like these are certainly not perfectly straight we can get in the door as well here. I find with, especially if you're doing shapes like, you know, man-made objects and things, we just got to spend a bit more time um, making sure that there, there's enough detail in there. I'm not saying spend all day on it, but um, yeah, just have enough in there so that you can... You know, when someone looks at it, it certainly looks more uh, structured, unlike, you know, bits of leaves and things like that. But even with leaves and flowers and that sort of thing, they have shapes in them as well. You know, these are circular. These are kind of cylindrical. These two, um, uh, what are they, big hedges? Or I'm not sure what kind of plants they are. So uh, I really like windows. And so I'm going to... I'm going to go shift and just shift my attention over to this side. Now, again, it's not a it's not a thing where you just have to get it in exactly, right? So if you want to change up these windows, feel free to do do your own thing. I'm going to I'm going to just try to get it in pretty much like the reference, um, maybe with some alterations. But, you know, we've got these white window frames here like this. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get a, a bit of the edge for those window frames. And we'll get in a couple here like this running through. And then we've got a separation running across here as well, which is nice. Um, there's actually more of this kind of this area here. This is where you can swap to smaller pens if you uh, uh, smaller nibs. So they actually create a more subdued line so that uh, you know whatever you're drawing it doesn't pop out all too much i mean for example this maybe if i want to get in that gutter or something see it's still there but it's not really um not really drawn out much there's even some of this detail on top of the house there um which i just quickly get in something like that you see it doesn't um overpower what's uh, what's going on and you can do the same thing for this sort of section here these little uh, the kind of, I don't know, design of the house or, or what have you. The bottom, there's like a, it kind of finishes off. Um, there's a bit of this sort of strappy stuff going on. Bricks, brickwork or what have you. Um, but we know it kind of continues on here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get in this section, which is like a, a kind of darker area. And I know we've got, uh, you know, a... You know this shrub or something coming up in there which i yeah i don't think i'm gonna leave that i'm gonna leave that in um uh, sorry i'm gonna take it out uh, the windows as well so you know i can just hatch 
like that to get in some darkness in the windows. There, 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 bit of hatching. Um, I'd say this place would be kind of scary to stumble into, stumble upon at night. Um, it looks nice during the day, but... Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so we've got some areas in here, like I was just drawing some, you know, some boxes and things. You know, we've even got some, you know, there's some plants or something here, right? That could be growing through um, the, the pot plants, uh, that. Yeah, little little bits and pieces like that. And then we can now use the uh, pen to do a little hatching in this section as well. And just get rid of some of that um, some of that light in there. Okay. And I don't know, it's just a decision that I've made, but you don't have to do this with with your pen. You can go in there with the watercolors later if you'd like. Just something. Sometimes I I decide the moment it, what I what I want. There, even here with the door frame. I mean, there's that. There's what else? There? Quite a there's quite a lot of detail in here, you know. So um, again, it all comes down to it's all subjective. What you want to portray, what you want to put in there, and um, yeah. So I might actually get some lights. Hatching running across the the door. That bit of light hatching, something like that. Uh, looks okay. On this side, um, let's get in a few shapes, like a, some rectangles and boxes or things that could be stuff just piled up here, right? It doesn't matter at all. All that I'm trying to do. Is create some contrast between these like poles here, little areas uh, of darkness underneath the roof and the poles in here as well. So it certainly helps. And look, a bit of that will be fine. And again, it's up to you. You can do it later if you want. Don't have to do it now. Okay. There's also opportunity to uh, put in a person uh, walking through. So I might just, you know. Get a person here, perhaps just a little bit closer to the scene, like that. Kind of almost like we're looking up at that person there. What could they be doing? Maybe, maybe holding a holding something, a rake or something like that here. Okay, something like that garden yeah, a bit of a bit of clothing on the person as well that okay and always do this while we've got um, areas of space and yeah before I start drawing in the other side of the house otherwise we're gonna have to start overlapping onto things there is uh Certainly there's another house over on that side and and, and this is up to you whether you want to go in and add those bits and pieces here on the other side. Um, I'm going to draw in a few more of these little, uh, I don't know what they are, just these little bits of colors and things like that, succulents up here. So um, we don't have to do it for the whole lot, but just bits and pieces, okay, it even, for example, we can do um, get some branches which aren't really there running through as well. I really like drawing branches, so I can't help it. Uh, now I, I do like I do like this one though that kind of goes all the way up. So I'll, I'll some um, let's use that there, and then here on this side it actually goes up further, around about here. That's really close to the to the house. So again, composition wise, uh, these there's just decisions that you have to make at this stage um, as to what you want to to sort of portray. Um, 
you know, even on that side that, you know, where it looks like there's potentially another house, um, you know, you don't have to get it overlapping completely with this one as well. Um, but it may help, it may actually help because we've got, um, got this layer of light on that house. So let's use a thinner liner, 0 0.05. 105, bring that over this there. And um, I mean, really, the, this, this tree should be closer. <clears throat> but the paper I've got is wider than the actual photograph, so there's always going to be a bit of space sort of left over. Um, you know, that's a area of the window. Something like that. Um, it's kind of obscured by the, obscured by a tree as well, which I'll get in. Um, but that will be just a afterthought really, um, not, not something that I'm going to emphasize too much, but balances out, of, balance it out a little bit more. Um. You know, here in the ground as well, I mean, since we're already here, uh, it's a good chance to put in some, like, these larger bits and pieces, these column blocks on the ground. So, this, and follow these perspective lines that you've drawn, these little lines that I've kind of drawn down like that as well. Use them a bit. To help you to structure these. This one can be a bit longer, for example. I almost almost didn't follow that the perspective line, so you just gotta be careful. Like that. Um you know, this one here, this one's just a you know another block, another block or something here, overlapping, and um you know, maybe one here that's obscured just away. So one thing I noticed is all this grass and stuff running through it as well. So yeah, you can just have a little, you know, just play around and use that or in a few blocks and things on the ground. Okay, that. And actually some of it goes out to the side there, which, I mean, it just ends up being grass and stuff anyway. So I'm not going to around too much. As I move further back into the distance, I'm gonna put in less uh, detail, okay? A little bit less detail, uh, but still follow those, uh, some of those perspective lines as well. I'm popping a block here and there, okay, but not too worried about uh, that stuff back there. Just a few here and there, I think that helps, like that, um, there, 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 um, cool, so, yeah, the, we'll go in and just do some of this front porch as well, just it's another layer, somewhere like that, let's put in another layer, um, and then join this off at the bottom, so that it, the door ends somewhere, then we've got just horizontal lines, a bunch of these horizontal lines that just run through. But again, we've got some shapes here, like that's a pot plant or something there. So all these bits and pieces here. So um, again, you can use a smaller pen. This is a point, the point oh five to get in extra details here. And if you make a mistake, just continue on, just recorrect, uh, correct that line and continue on. I've made about a hundred mistakes so far. So as long as the whole thing um, makes sense at the end, and uh, you, you'll be okay. So I'm gonna check the chats, just see what we what we are up to. So Peggy, Peggy Burt says, I'm in the planning stage of, a, of an old homestead portrait. I needed this, thank you. Thanks Peggy, and um, I'm glad that you're finding it helpful. Um, yeah, just some of the, the tips that I was mentioning about 
uh, the proportions of the house. Keep that in mind. So the height of the house, height and width, height and width of um, smaller sections and features like windows. You always, you know, you're drawing the, these sections in the middle. Just compare them in, in relation the size. Uh, make sure that they they make sense to the the shape that's uh, containing them. So that's the that's a thing. You can't have a, you know, you can't have uh, a you know a section of the house like this and then you're trying to draw these windows but maybe they're tiny little windows that are a quarter of the size of these it's just not going to look in proportion so even the, the person here if I made that person the head of that person up here and then the body you know two to three times larger you know, look like a giant's walking around so the the objects that are surrounding the uh, person it kind of has to make sense that's a trailer so I mean He's probably a little bigger, but you know that makes sense. It's not sort of um, they're too small or too big, so it just comes in time. Certainly, with uh, more practice and experience, you you don't have to think as much. Um, initially, I really had to force myself to, um, yeah, just just measure things, I guess, and sometimes even use a ruler. So. You know what, just use whatever tools you have. Use whatever tools you have. And I mean, if you need to use a ruler to start off with, or you want to try um, different methods, uh, some people trace as well. You know, that tracing can even help um, as well because it trains your mind to, to also recognize proportions um, too. So it's not as well as freehand drawing. Mary says... It helps to know you don't have to get it perfect. No, yeah, it's uh, often it's actually even the imperfections that make your your drawing or your painting look stink. Um, you know, you, the photograph is is its own thing, and so should your your painting or your drawing. Uh, it rather than a perfect representation, and I think people get really uh, caught up in thinking that it has to be you know, exactly like they see it. Uh, and, um, and that can really stress you out if you, if you, if you're comparing yourself, um, in that way. So don't, yeah, don't fall into that trap. And, you know, that's just a bit of hatching I've done here, maybe to draw out some of these, um, the bushes and stuff, you know, a bit of that line of that, bush sort of running around the side um we'll get cracking we'll get cracking with the the rest of the house and figure out what i want to do i'm going to just reduce we just reduce that bush down a bit as well and um checking out on youtube there's a few uh quite a few people watching i'm surprised you're quite surprised that um that you guys are yeah and not enjoying outside enjoying the sun doing something which i'm going to do soon after this, um, Nikki says, oh, well, I didn't know you were going live today. I'm late. Got to uh, let me go and get my materials. Yeah, look, this is just a, a, a just a, a live that I decided to, to quickly do, Nikki. So I, I didn't didn't plan on it. Uh, I know I've got the Saturday and the, and the Wednesday ones that I do, and, and they're a bit more planned. Um, yeah, this one I was I was going to, you know, had some materials arrive in the mail and I was going to do this sketch anyway. So I thought, hey, I'll just stream it and see see if anyone's uh anyone's keen to to uh watch um and helena helena Falek um sends uh 200 stars thank you so much helena really appreciate it um that's awesome uh i've seen you quite a few quite a few of these lives so i'm happy to have you here catch you um catch you in the morning or the evening wherever you're at um how are you doing with your drawing I think that's it. I think we're pretty much um, caught up with the with the questions. Oh, there's another one. Um, Silver, Silver Anne, and uh, I've got to translate. I think it's in Spanish. Um, <laughs> Silver says, "Fabulous! What a good picture!" Um, awesome. I think uh, I think it's turning out okay for the time being. Let's let's uh, let's see. Let's see. I mean. A lot of these, uh, I've never, for, for, for all the live sessions that I do these days, I don't plan for them. I don't do a pre-sketch before it. I just go through and I just, uh, yeah, I just, I just pretty much um, wing it on the, on, you know, at the time that I'm drawing. 
But one thing to remember is that I've, you know, with the kind of processes that I go through, measurements of um, shapes, drawing in, uh, you know, things like perspective, uh, those are things that I've practiced so many times. And when you get more confident in doing, uh, doing that, then it just becomes easier to turn, uh, to sketch and turn something like this into a, into a, into a drawing or a painting. In fact, I prefer to do this outside if I have the ability to. I mean, it'd probably be a bit weird if I just sat outside this guy's house and just started drawing it, um, especially it was it was on quite a busy street. So in those sort of situations, I prefer to sort of take it home. And when I do urban sketching, I like to sort of go in areas where slightly slightly out of the way where there's not going to be too many people that, that uh, run in me or I don't obstruct traffic or something like that. So... Um, yeah, so, and Yvette says, nice, a uh, live surprise. Yep, awesome. It's a, uh, yeah, it's good to have it. I think I just turn it on if I, you know, if I feel like sketching. Um, e Even the other day, I've been making small, uh, just uh, quick sketch videos, which I've uploaded, and I found that people have um, have enjoyed them. So, Yvette, I saw your, I think you did some some lily pads. So, that was one, one uh, little exercise that I thought would be nice, sort of beneficial to everyone. So if I thought, you know, if there's anything that I can do to sort of share, I, I just stick the camera on these days. Before, it used to be weird. I have the camera on and I'm drawing. Um, in fact, I'm doing this live initially for a while was quite nerve-wracking, I have to say, because um, you, know, you get a bit jittery and stuff, but now I'm a bit better, certainly a lot better than I used to be. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get started on this left-hand side of the house. Now, one thing we want to make sure is that the um, the width of these two sides are roughly equal. Um, you know, this one's actually going to be a little bit uh, slightly smaller, but don't worry too much about that. It's more just due to the perspective. Um, but I'm going to have to invent this side. So let's just draw in a, a really quick line like this. Uh, it's kind of, remember, trying to get it the same level as this other one as well. So the bottom of the roof. So I've, I kind of made a mistake there, but, you know, it doesn't matter. I'll turn that to a... And that to the window part there and then we're going to get in um where we think it will end so probably here like that um and we'll get in a little line just running up to the top like that bring this down here like this uh this actually comes quite far down onto the roof so like here about here i'm going to draw this line across and bring this section into the roof mm -hmm. just like that and um we go pretty much done that just connect this on now to that right hand side there is a uh, again a little section that right hand side of this building which we need to indicate not um perfectly something like that. kind of i'm kind of altering it as well uh, a little bit where I want that edge of that roof to be. Interesting looking house, hey? Um, yeah, just the design of it. Now that I've got that side up, what we can do is uh, put a chimney in here. A again, it's, uh, you know, you can change around this chimney to whatever you feel uh, you want to put in there, yeah? And I'll put in a bit more of an edge like this on this chimney. Yeah, like that. Oh, I've just managed to make it. Um, I can extend this one out actually a little more, kind of come down to the roof like that, um, and have some darkness in this section there, like that. Uh, a little pot, something on top there. Then we've got uh, you know this section here, which is basically uh, the the roof in the background, and then that joins on here. We can finish this off. Like that. Yeah. Okay. And the tiles. Now this is kind of interesting. Uh, I I think I'll just go get in a few lines for the tiles. Um, running actually just horizontally, just horizontal tiles. Yeah. And and remember to you know I'm using when I draw I sort of turn the pen a bit on the side so that it kind of grazes the paper. I've talked about this before. It's a technique to create lines that are a bit more subdued. Another another thing you can do, like I said before, is just to pick up a very small liner, like a 0 0.5, 0 0.05 liner, 
and even with this 0 0.05 liner you're getting a similar result there where it just looks so subtle and that's what the, that's what we want we don't want uh, harsh big lines running across the roof because it's, it's just going to look uh, too unbalanced so I'm being fairly neat. I'm also taking my time with this one. Normally I do two demonstrations in one go, so I'm kind of rushing around to do something to get them finished. But, uh, you know, I think I'm probably going to just stick with one for the next live and, and see how that see how that turns out. Um, it's more for my sake and, and also for your sake in terms of people watching, um, making sure that you, you're able to keep up as well because I... I've had a, uh, some feedback with um, some viewers saying I go too quick and that makes sense because I am kind of rushing it. If I feel like I'm rushing things, I think you're going to feel like you're, you're also rushing things. So, okay, there we go. A bit of outlining, a bit of detailing, that kind of thing. Um, what time is it? It's 12 o'clock. So let's go ahead and uh, bring this one down this edge of the building here that bring that down and remember it's um you know there, there are some i don't know what these are i think it's like planks of wood or something near the base of the house um, or they're just like it's like a brick pattern or something so um you know i can do this kind of thing here uh, another cool thing i figured out is just drawing little bricks and it's, I mean, it sounds tedious, but it's actually kind of fun where you can just draw in little, you see little um, bricks and indications and that there. Um, it takes a little while to do, but uh, I find it quite enjoyable actually, isolating bricks or shapes and stuff here in the background. Um, you know, you don't have to do this, but uh, I'm just going to do it for fun anyway. Here's some like on that side as well, so you can kind of change it up. Um, add a few on that side. They're just shapes that will add perhaps some interest in that section, but it's not going to take away uh, from the overall scene. Even here, these steps, there's bricks in them. So by adding indications of bits and pieces in here um this makes certainly makes it look a bit more interesting so really do this for as long as you want i mean it's, it's a it's quite a certainly quite a limitless exercise where you're just detailing and adding in more bits and pieces but it's up to you how much you want to put in is, is essentially up to you. So um, anyway, uh, we'll get in this we'll get in this uh, window as well. Let me just put in, scratch in a bit of detail for that window. Then I'll, and we should be able to finish it off. That there, let's just bring this one down here for a couple of, same thing as the other side, couple of verticals. A one horizontal here, and then the um, got the frame of that of that window. A little bit of scratchiness running through some of the windows as well, and we can leave some. We don't need to color them all in as well. That's another thing I forgot to mention that it's there's going to be different reflections and things. Even on this side here, I can maybe emphasize. Of, you know darkness on some areas of the windows but not on others um should actually be more darkness on this right hand side because we've got the light source coming from left to right so that you know potentially be a, a shadow cast some of the edges um, and the frames like that um yeah just little things that i've that I've picked up uh, well you're looking at the general shadow pattern on the building but then there's also shadow patterns on also shadow patterns on uh, all the little shapes that you draw it's endless it's, really, it's endless um cool so I feel like there should be something here but you know what I, I think I'll leave it because I like this kind of light pattern that's running across in there and you know we've actually got some space here I think I can add another vertical running up there what could 
and is this I'm going to grab the 0.5 add another vertical um there i'm very i'm very sore at the moment because i just went to the gym um went back to the gym a couple of days ago opened up finally over here in melbourne and i'm just <laughs> i went back and i did everything that i could I did squats i did chin-ups i did chest press and um yeah whole body is just it's just gone but it's good <laughs> to be back um so that's so if you see me stretching stretching around a little bit that's what it's uh what i'm doing um how you're doing and uh how's the how's your, your drawings coming along are you um keeping up and um yeah let me know let me know in the chats i'm going to work on this top part a little bit more and start putting in some um just a, a smaller triangle in here as well smaller section of that rooftop like this okay and around the edge that uh, yeah. kind of what i did on that right hand side one okay finding shapes inside shapes and just start seeing more and more of these things in fact there's you know these um tiles just run down like this as well so a lot of little things little intricacies that you end up discovering you stare long enough into a into a reference photo so the the trick is um you know trying to reduce it down and, um trying to find a balance um, in terms of what what type of uh, the level of detail that you want to put in there as well so you know, normally normally I, i'd be finished with this already i'm just yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying out a few different things and might make this one a bit more detailed, perhaps. I don't know. Certainly is going that way with all this stuff I'm putting in and that. So it could be nice as well, even to put in some trees behind it. Uh, so, you know, could maybe put in something like this, like a shrub running behind there, a larger tree. And I'm using a smaller pen, a smaller nib, point zero point zero five, so that helps uh, push that tree shape backwards. Uh, you can see there. Um, there's also one here. I mean, let me just see how I can put this one in. Little tree shape running through the back. A little bit there, a little bit there. Um, I think the one figure's enough. Certainly. Certainly, um, don't want to over overwhelm everything. Um, some of these rounder shapes. I mean, look, it's just simple simplification of the of what I see in there. Anything. Tiny branch or something running up here. That darker sort of branch. There's all this. You know, there's just not enough darks in some areas, so that's why I'm going to go around. I will go in and let's put in this um, this vertical, okay, up all the way through here. And um, the interesting thing about this is that it kind of frames the the scene. So this is all going to be almost like one big shape. You can see, and then you're looking through this little. Uh, pocket through the center not like that and i you know um i'm gonna get all this this here is going to be dark and i'll add in some more shrubs and things here on the side um we could even potentially get another person here a couple of figures got one already but um this uh pattern of darkness running across here and then light running across here i think that'll be nice perhaps I can change the light pattern on this house as well. I'm just kind of thinking how I'm going to do it. Um, certainly there's a lot of light in the roof side of this, uh, the sides of the building. Maybe I could get in a, a soft, soft um, shadow running across 
uh, parts of it exaggerate that shadow pattern. Because in the photo, it looks pretty good as, as is, but I do find that when you go in and you try to add something like that in watercolors, um, there's often just not enough depth. You need to really uh, exaggerate and change something up. You know, here, look, I've just put in some flowers, um, very basic sort of flowers, right? I don't even know what type. Not a, uh, well, I say I'm not really a floral artist because I don't, uh, it's just not a subject that I, I choose so so often. I, I maybe like I use them as uh, part of other you know, part of other ones uh, like this, for example. So generally not on their own, but but yeah, let me know if you if you to do um, some florals in the in the future. I can give it a give it a go. Um, there's not all too much difference from drawing this to drawing that. I mean, the flower it's just again, can be broken down into a few different um, different shapes. Here, yeah, there's like a bush or something like that behind there. Um, there, I'm going to just join this on to like a bush there and get another figure. Yeah, just further back in the distance. Like that. Okay. Maybe just standing over, over there, coming into the scene. Um, just creates a bit more interest, perhaps. Um, you know, in there you could even put like a dog or something. I, I don't know. Um, I don't have like a reference for a dog, but um, make one up. Right. There we go. That kind of looks like a dog. Okay. So. Find the edge of this house a bit more. I know what finishes about here. Okay, looking good. And um, maybe some shrub or something in the background of that area of the house as well. Something to create a, a bit of darkness behind this section. I don't know whether I should have some branches moving over. I can certainly try. Um, certainly try to just do something like this. Get a few more of these branches. Oops. That's a funny looking branch. Um, this have some kind of going out of the scene as well, like that. And see another one here. Oops. I don't want to overdo it, but. Something like that. All this stuff here is just going to be one big shape. Okay, one big shape. And that's another big shape there. So I think we're pretty much done with the drawing. I'm going to go put in a bit of color and let's uh, see what it looks like at the end. Um, how are we all doing and how is your how your sketches coming along? You know, you know. Um a few questions. Peggy um Peggy Burt, she's asking, what do you do when the foreground in the photo is boringly void of detail? Well, um you, you sometimes don't have to draw everything in. Like um, it's it's mainly exaggerating a few shapes here and there. Like these blocks, these blocks here, like that. Um, I mean, this is. I know it looks. It, it might look on camera like there's a lot in there, but there's just little circles I've drawn in. Um, so, you know, with the drawing, remember that it doesn't have to necessarily be um, super detailed to begin with. Uh, a lot of the detail you can get in um, later with the with the watercolors. Um, just try to pick out a few shapes that you might want to emphasize, and just kind of stick with them. So you know, even on this side, also what I like to do is, um, you know, you use a thicker line in some areas as well to sort of uh, create a sense of uh, just moving that shape closer to you. I mean, these bricks. They, they look okay, but um, then I'm not too pleased. I'm really not too pleased with them. 
but uh, you know it's just something that you can play around with add little bricks add details smaller details up in the front um and also larger shapes like these blocks uh, be a bit more kind of uh, is it looking put another one in here for example like that it's another you know that's another brick that's sort of sticking out um what could we do here they're kind of just facing facing the viewer really so there's not really a huge amount you can do um but stuff like that this one something like that perhaps okay um of little things like that it does help it does help um that forwards a bit more yeah so thicker lines in here as well um, but again I, I don't want to get too caught up in every every little every little thing uh, i'm taking my time today though in any rush it's a sunday so i've got all the all the time in the world to figure this one out um so let's go ahead and, and do some of the painting. And let me just check if any more if there's any more chats. Um Yvette says you'll feel worse tomorrow. Yeah, or well, this is already two days after. So I think I just got a bit too ambitious. <laughs> my neck's my neck's killing me. <laughs> so yeah, it'll I'll get over it. Um to America one says, I like your links. I'll check them out and pick up uh, a few new items. Yeah, uh, yeah. Have have a look and see um, see what's best for your your sort of situation. Uh, work out also, you know, price wise uh, where you're at as well. What's um, you, know, you can whether you can pick up pick up some similar materials at your place um, where you're where you're at. Uh, but yeah, the sketchbook this is pretty good, and uh, I've got courses as well. You can have a look at Yvonne says I can't tell what the flowers are, but I think the tall trees are above Arbon Vitae. Arbon Vitae. Cool. Probably I won't remember that. <laughs> I know the names of like a few plants and, and that's about it. Three things that are that are edible. Um my my mum and my grandparents are um you know really avid gardeners and they yeah my grandpa as well and was still around so let's have a look at i think that's it i think that's all the chats um, i think that's all the chats um, if you have any more questions just drop it in drop it in um, it's good to see there's quite a few people um on the stream even though it is kind of in the weekend kind of thing and uh, let anyone know so uh i'll let, just grab my palette out and um i'm going to try to get this painting done in about half an hour yeah or, or or even less or even less so let's have a bit of fun here and um i want you to challenge yourselves in um just dropping the paint in just being a bit more spontaneous and um Let's let's uh, start with this house now. There's certainly some details on here. Uh, I'll just quickly. I've forgotten to do a little something here. There's some you know, the the wall here, the brick wall, or whatever. It kind of goes up a little bit further. So I'm gonna just extend that line a bit. So noticed a bit of color on the house. I'm gonna go with Naples yellow, and um, not just that, just a few other yellows as well. I've even got some of this bright yellow there which is a yellow um lemon yellow and a bit of yellow ochre so um we don't have to worry really about the colors uh in terms of like the the exact yellows and things like that we just want to make sure that we've got a nice kind of pattern of light running across the building um and i'm going to be using just a combination of yellows because i find that looks interesting so a bit of that you know, this even comes up on the chimney some of that and uh what i'll do i'll simplify down and get some shadows on a bit later so you know we're just going to paint that light on first and it actually moves all the way down into the ground too 
So really depends on how kind of uh, saturated that you want these colors uh, to be. So let's go in at the bottom, a bit more of this Naples yellow, Naples yellow. Um, drop some more color in there. That um, this side of the building is actually really, really kind of bright, that edge there. And then we've got some more in there. Yeah, just uh, yellows running through the scene there. Did there. Um, burnt sienna. Some burnt sienna down. That. Some red. A little bit of red. Yeah. Kind of let that blend upwards into the yellow. So we've got a kind of mixing, a bit of mixing going on. Um, now, while we're kind of in this area, this is where you want to pick up yellows and some, uh, probably some yellow ochre and uh, some warm colors to just drag that across the ground. Because we have got um, to indicate this pattern of light running through the scene. So this is certainly going to help going around some of this stuff, uh, even here on that bin, um, here on the, on the ground as well. Um, down on this side, there's bits of light that are kind of poking through. And so it's important to get some of this stuff, even though we're going to go darker later, having some of that on here is going to help um, a bit. So um, cool. This that yellow running through. Now, a lot of this is just green. So this is going to be good fun to do. Um, I'm going to go grab some sap green bit of i've got a bit of hookers green as well and also some emerald green and i combine all these together in different areas to just get in sides of um these areas but uh, let me just i forgot to get in that house here actually it's a kind of a creamy color down the back so i'll just put in a very light wash it's probably going to just blend anyway so just something like that because I had forgotten to do it before. Um, there we go, a bit more darkness in there. And you can also add some blue in this section too if you feel like there's just not enough um, variation in darkness or color. So a bit of blue just mixes that up essentially. So there's also um, obviously these little ones here at the front which are lighter. Um, they have kind of even yellow, bits of yellowish tones on them as well. So you can actually um, see like what I'm doing here, I'll, I can do these lighter and then we can go in with a bit of negative painting afterwards if we leave it to dry. And I'll show you how to indicate some little shapes. These bricks, I'm gonna put some burnt sienna on the bricks like that. There, just drag that through, just get it all to merge. Don't. Don't try to draw, don't try to paint individual bricks or anything like that. Just, um, this is some English red. And I'm trying to have some of this red here so that it um, complements the green. Well, so, looking okay. Also got some burnt sienna, that does help. Can drop in a bit of darkness in this section too. Um, and pretty much the same thing goes over here. We've got, um, you know, it's a green and, 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 and the flowers again is something you can just sort of cut around if you want to get in, you know, some white flowers or some uh, yellow flowers or stuff like that. You can just do this sort of thing and just cut around some of them. Um, because I find if you go in later and you try to add some yellow over the top of, of, it, of the green area, it's just going to be this way there. Bit of that color through here. Okay. Let me just carry this all, all the way across. Um, oops, I've gone over that flower, but problem. There, just bring that up to the top here. Um, here. Uh, some of this joins onto the um, the house as well. This bit of this green here. There. Okay. Because most of that house is pretty much dried already, it doesn't matter. Again, I've forgotten, I've forgotten a little section here of the house. 
which I'll just put in again with yellow. No big deal. That's running through. Uh, a bit more green. Um, more darker green in some areas too. Okay. Sap green on the left hand side. Remember that the light pattern is um, such that we've got uh, more kind of lighter sections on the left and darker sections on the right. But um, you know, again, we can just exaggerate out uh, bits and pieces. We don't have to use that particular light pattern. Um, we can just create a, a lot of darkness in this area. Just go with that essentially. So. You know, even with these branches and things, um, what have I got? I've got a little, probably like a little round brush that I can play around with. Just try to get in some browns, brown um, for parts of the, what the branches and stuff that stick out like that. Okay, just give it a bit of color, a bit of brown, like that. I have too many greens in here, so some some of this, this little bit of brown would be nice there. Um, you know, if you feel like you want a bit over this side as well, you can go in and just drop in and some some of those uh, shapes. But I'm just trying to find some, I'll find more of a balance running. Um, good. So the sky. Uh, we're going to need to do the sky as well, but before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and add some of this, a little bit of green to the background for these little, if you look carefully, these little trees, um, shapes running behind. Um, it's very subtle, but uh, the, the sky, I'm just going to pick up a bit of, got a flat brush. Just grab some cerulean blue, just cerulean blue. Drop that in. Keep it really light as well. Um, another thing you can do, <clears throat> you can pre-wet an area, such you're just doing it like this. Just pre-wet it. Oops. Now I've already got water and uh, blue in there, so it's not going to work as well. But um, you can pre-wet like this. There, there, and then drop in blue like this. Okay, and that will sort of spread around and create a sky effect as well. That line is dried real quick there. I don't know why it's done that. I'm just going to cut around the house. Be careful not to go over the buildings too much. A little bit of mixing is fine, but I don't want your buildings to turn green. It happens. Okay, so it's kind of, look, it's just turned into a wash. That wash. Um, like that. You're going to get some bits of white in this section as well, not a problem. Just, just try to get some parts to mix, some parts to just um, here as normal. Uh, like just cut around some parts and let some parts mix. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, there we go. Something, something there. Um, and we can also just you know start by putting in a bit of detail for the figures and stuff as well. So the the green here for this plant or whatever it is. Okay. And the trailer, I'm gonna get some red, some vibrant red. Trailer. And the bin. What should I do for the bin? Maybe just some dark colour for now. Yeah. A little bit. I'm gonna to have to go redo this again later. Um, and the shirt of the the figure, we can I think go with some blue or purple color, just because we've got a lot of warm colors around the figure. So I think a bit of cooler color is going to create some um maybe some more red for this one. Just create some more complementaries. Nice sort of complementary effect there. Cool. So that's um that's looking all right. I can go into the blouse as well. We can pick up some yellow, drop some in in spots. Um, you can also pick up uh, like a bit of red or something. Depends because you've got 
So you've got these complementaries, right? So you've got all this green. So if we have some red through it, that would be nice as well. Um, yeah, we've got even some purple. So just some soft colors running through and hoping that will kind of blend and mix a bit. And um, we'll go through again when this is dried and get in some negative shapes, some uh, negative painting. Okay. Look, is there anything else I need to do? Probably a little, a slight wash of blue on some of these windows there. That just indicate the, you know, the sky, reflections of the sky, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, that's the first wash. We're almost done. I'm going to give this a real quick dry. And then we'll get through and put in all the shadows and um, hopefully make it work and make it look... Uh, make it look like uh, something by the end of it, eh? And there's some chats here. Um, Lucia, Lucia Lupu says, I made such a mess with those tiles. <laughs> the, the the ones in the front. It's it's uh, it's tricky because you're kind of following the perspective, right? So you're kind of, you're drawing these lines. If you're imagining there's a point here, one point here at the back, and we're drawing lines connecting to that same point. Um yeah, it's just drawing the tiles in line with those other lines on the ground. It's hard to explain. Um, but if you, yeah, if you practice just looking at reference photos, look at the angle of the lines and how they they, they go a little wider, um, you know, a little bit more vertical in um, in as they face towards you and then start to go 10 towards that 180 degree mark as you go further out to the sides. Um, that's something that's just a pattern with everything. And once you figure that out, it becomes a lot easier for you. Kate Padbury says the path is difficult. Um, the path is difficult. Yours looks flat. Any tips? Um, yeah, so I, I think that's about it. Like looking at um, putting maybe a few shapes, um, a few shapes uh, running up through the, you know, stacking these bricks up like that. I think that helps. I don't think I've done this path uh, super well either. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's just really trying to follow this this um, perspective as well. I think that makes it look um, like it's larger here and sort of converging to a point. Um, let's have a look if there's anything on Facebook. Um, Cool. I think that's about. I think that's about it. I'm going to give this a really quick dry, and I'll just pause the audio for a bit. Alrighty, um, so that's all dried off. I'm gonna go ahead and um, start putting in some details, uh, mainly just the shadows. So once we get the shadows in, uh, a large sort of shadow pattern, I think it's gonna look great. Um, yeah, just a, a large shape just running across. Yvonne's asking as well, what brand is your English Red? Um, it's the one I'm using here is, is Schmincke. So I don't often use it. I don't often use it, but uh, yeah, it does work. It does work quite well for things like it's. It's more of a subdued, a subdued, deeper kind of red. It's almost turning towards, uh, tending towards a brown. Uh, so yeah, it's it's quite nice. I kind of use it in conjunction with, with uh, what is it? Am I trying to say burnt sienna? Use it in conjunction with burnt sienna. So. We're going to go ahead and um, get started. Something's happened here. I don't know why, but um, I think I just put in some extra water at, the, at, a, at a funny point. So it's getting, I've um, got a funny sort of dried mark there, but I'm going to work with it anyway. Um, so 
I, I want to get a, a shadow running across um, areas of the of the scene, um, perhaps even uh, you know exaggerating some of the light patterns. Um, perhaps I'm just trying to think what we can do. Mm, so you know, there's actually if we look at it. Uh, a bit of darkness running underneath. We could leave. We could leave some of this light here and a bit of the light on the that side of the the, the building. And get the top and that area to be a bit darker. A bit dark. Bit of darkness there. Um, darkness here. And uh, I think I'll also get a sharp shadow running across uh, that building as well. Um, this side of the, the the house. A bit of sharpness here. And I'm going to join that on with the shadows here. So. Let's start off with the house. I'm going to use a number six round brush, and um, you know, sometimes this goes well, sometimes it doesn't. But what always happens is that I, you know, I end up getting some kind of shadow shape in there that looks okay. So uh, let's have a crack. Um, I'm mixing up a bit of. This is just a bit of ultramarine, and I've mixed it up with some neutral tint okay and I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna be careful here actually you can get in a shadow running across here there and it kind of just maybe just cuts across the building like that something like this there and then I might just leave this section here but maybe I can get in a Thinking a this you can get this into a sharper sort of shadow like there, and I'll do a similar shadow pattern like that here, and um, perhaps move this down like that there. Um, then I'll soften off here a bit as well. Okay, then let's get in a bit of. Um, darkness up the top of this roof as well here there just darken off a little um, that I'm gonna leave part of that rooftop in as well just the darkness on that rooftop here so a bit of shadow effect like that there um, that's that side's kind of done I can put in a bit of a shadow here for this side of the building now just uh, Kind of comes onto the roof like this, there. Okay, bit of a shadow pattern, and then um, underneath it's all pretty dark. I mean, even in here, we're looking at um, a bit of darkness running through that section. I'm just going to darken that all down. Um, dry brush a bit of that too. That's there, there, okay. And this side of the um, this side's going to be darker here. Well, and I'm going to go and get in a, again a shadow running across um, the same sort of pattern I've done on the other side. Up a bit more of that bluish gray color. Do this once. Let's check that pattern on the side. There, there. Um, it's pretty. It's still pretty light. This shadow. That maybe a bit on the roof as well. Um, here, like that. That. Okay. Some of this bit here as well, this uh, chimney, darken that side and darken this side of the chimney. Okay, there, um, looking okay. General sort of shadow like shape. Um, maybe at the bottom, I'll just darken off as well. Yeah, a bit. Just some strength section. Okay, now. Um, I'm going to go and add in some more like greens and colors, for example, here, um, if I just darken up 
darken up this section, I might be able to just draw out some of the details on the house better, the negative painting. Okay, just a few little strokes like that. Mm. Something like this. There. Yeah. Bit here. There. Yeah. Bit of darkness. That. Um, but just try not to go over the house, just leave bits there. Okay, even the figure, we want to cut around that figure as well. That bit of color through that section. Um, let it mix as well, let it sort of have some blended edges. That, I don't want too hard edges and everything. Um, then we're going to go and darken all this stuff down at the front, and I'm going to use more neutral tint bit more of this stuff uh, here as well, green and neutral tint. We can have some um, bits of darker sections of the, the tree and um, also using a bit of dry brush helps as well. So I've just picked up some dark paint, a bit of neutral tint and a bit of green, and then I will just uh, dry off that brush on, and the, on a bit of paper and then continue um, kind of drawing with it, cutting around some shapes and this is where I was talking about, you know, where we're, again, cutting around some of these uh, shapes like this. I, mean, I don't even know what it is, but um, some little shapes here. This is a, a, just basically some negative painting. So cutting around and doing, um, bringing this shape forward and because it's in the foreground. So, okay, a bit of that. Bit of this here, a mm, bit more here, cut around areas and um, use some dark colors in here too. Okay. That, um, that, that do. The layering of all this uh, makes it look interesting. So keep going and keep persevering onwards. Um, and then a bit of red or something in there as well. Okay, but it's, it's predominantly green, this area in here. So I'm just trying to indicate, yeah, just bits of darkness in here. Um, mm. Some more greens. And it also helps to um, indicate the light maybe hitting um, some of the, the uh, plants here as well. So while we don't want to get everything the same color, um, you know, some of these bits are going to be still exposed to the sun. And it would just create a different sort of shape, some interesting bits and pieces in here. We can still go over that later once it dries as well. So really up to you. There. 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 More in here. A bit more in here. Yeah. It's kind of gone out of the there. there. Kind of where we get near to the bricks now. I'm just gonna be a teeny bit more careful. Um but drawing some of this red, maybe a few bits of red, that, drawing that on, okay. areas, um, some more red, perhaps for these areas here, these little bits of brick, that, um, there, there's even, you know, if you look in here, there's even little bits of green, or uh, just growing bits of, um, grass and stuff just growing in between so I'm going to indicate some of that even some here uh, there as well find this a little bit more um, that and again we've got this side a bit more negative painting to do on the other side um, normally I'll spend a bit more time doing this actually the uh, negative painting but I'm going to get this finished the idea though, right? There's that flower. It's cutting around uh, some of these. 
like this and you know make sure you go dark enough as well oops there there's one another one here leaving a few things out does help um there and another thing is that we do have a lot of um a kind of this dark shadow that's running across um which i'll get in just after this is dried off a little bit i want to layer it over the top of everything but hoping this green will dry a little bit more first Some more green running through in here yeah there um, what i want is to get in um a very dark shape on the left hand side as well to help frame what's what's uh, going on um, yeah, that could be like another branch as well coming up here and up again we're gonna have a bit more darkness running on the right hand side of the tree there Maybe some dry brush strokes at yeah, that side as well. Dark, I'm paint I'm using. Some more darks running up the side like this and getting uh this pattern as well for the branches. Mm -hmm. But things starting to emerge from this. Or green. Yeah. Well. Um, bit of green here as well. Now comes the uh, kind of shadows uh, that I was talking about before. Um. And this can be interesting because I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work out, but we'll we'll give it a crack. We'll have one uh, maybe just running across the ground on that side. So we've got some uh, here. I've got a flat brush, a flat brush. Um, let's check the chats, and you also give this a moment to dry. Okay. Um. And Lu Lucia, Lucia says, yes, it's all about horizontal lines, perspective view, um, theoretic, I know that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it can be, it can be tricky at times, but basically if I, I normally just imagine that there's a point here, then I have, I draw, if you have a ruler, you can draw, um, a bunch of lines running towards that point, And that kind of helps you to then, um, draw these other shapes on, uh, these little tiles and things on the ground. Uh, and I think that's, I think that's it, that's it, um, we've still got a, quite a few people, a few people watching along, uh, let me know where you're watching from as well, if you're, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, um, maybe it's a bit of a, it's around the same time as I do the, the Saturday lives, so I figure, I figure we've got, um, you know, similar sort of, uh, here, so, um, now I'm gonna put in um, the shadow, and I'm hoping this will all just blend together. Uh, I've done it before, so it should be okay. But I want to preserve some of the light, um, the light of, and, and things at the back as well. So a bit of neutral tint, and I'm gonna pick up some blue, blue and neutral tint, just sort of mixed together, so that I've got a bit of a kind of cooler shadow color, perhaps. Okay, and um, just go for it. So maybe a bit coming in from this side. Yeah. There. Yeah. There. Yeah, there's a bit maybe underneath. There. Yeah. Um yeah, the big big shadow that joins up with it. Be darker. There. Yeah. Like that. But the aim as well is like I, I do want to get in some 
dry brush bits in areas. And I want to connect the left and the right hand side. So important because we've got this void in the center. Connect that left and right hand side up there. And more of the neutral tint here in the foreground. Yeah. Shift that around a little bit. Okay. There's some of that, that shadow now running across and I can get a bit of another sort of lighter sort of shadows running underneath the building here as well. Um, like that. But the important thing is we want to leave some of the light in here. So don't color it all in. You want to leave that bit of slither of light running through the center like that. I think is very absolutely going to help. And you know, I'm just darkening up a bit more in here. Again, you can go back into this area later and draw out a bit more, a uh, little bit more light in that section too. Um, let's have a look. Um, I want to just go in and get um, some really dark colors onto the house. So the, some of the windows, for instance, I can go in and just drop in a bit of, a bit of color in there like that, just neutral tint. Get in some of the, the darker windows like this um, there, emphasize some of that. We're missing uh, some really dark areas within the house that would help bring out the light of the house as well. So some of that darkness in there. Um, you know, we've got a bit here inside as well. There, a bit of darkness here. Here, here, bit here, there, some of the windows here as well, just uh, add in a bit like that. A lot of it is really just layering, layering over, laying a few details and things. A bit of a shadow underneath the rooftops um, in some areas as well, underneath the frame there. Um, it's a very sort of light shadow in the background. I'm, I'm tempted to just darken it all, darken it all off again, but um, just also have to be careful not getting rid of all that black house. Add a quick layer over the top in some areas. There maybe, there, here, that, underneath the house here, here, this side. There's a wheel here as well that I haven't put in. Blend a little bit. Bit of a wheel and that. Figures, uh, so there's a figure here that I can. Oops, started to layer on there, so it's starting to blend a bit. Still do it there, and a bit of a shadow for that figure. This, okay, just connect it up with the legs. Um, this figure here, a bit of darkness there, connect that up as well. Okay. Oops, um, I do think this object, this bin here, does need to be a bit darker as well. There. So, you can see, just drawing out areas of uh, light and shadow in here to try to correct and um, get it to the tone that I want. That I want to do darker, that darker. Some more darkness on yeah oops that should be pretty dark actually section roof don't see any all that down a bit um good Uh, 
don't a bit of red basis of the Uh, hey, it started to um, it's starting to dry off a bit now. Um, and I can you know go in here and just and start adding in some other darks, layering over the top again. That you can go in there and try to detail those bits and pieces and plants and things as well if you'd like. I don't know. Huge deal. I also use a, see, I've got this little, um, what do you call it, little, little fan brush. And I can get in some indications of grass. Very light wash of color and just sort of flicking that through that. It's very, and very sparingly as well, because again, we want to keep that light in there. Probably the the the, the uh, concentration of water in here is very very high. It's about um, three quarters water to more. But I can just get in a few little indications like that, um, and I'll do it here as well once it's dried. Um, this gives a, a, a another a different kind of texture to some of these areas. And well, so it's up to you whether you wanna do this or not. Um, I do have some time to put in some birds while I'm waiting for things to dry. So some quick little birds like that. Uh, neutral tint and just picking up some of that with the brush and uh, dropping that in in areas. Okay. And um, here we go. it just helps as well again to fill up the sky because we've got so much detail and things uh, down the bottom, so it will join join things on left to right a bit better. Uh, some hair maybe for the figures. That um, the door. I think I should probably get in a bit more darkness for the door. Forgotten about that completely. So just something like this. We can also go in later with a white pen or a bit of white gouache and um, yeah, basically uh, draw out some of those little highlights you see in there. Um, and really at this point, I think we're just about done. It's uh, just really more about what you wanna, what, what else you think you might wanna add in as well yeah. but uh hope that was helpful for you helpful for you guys i'm happy with this one um i'll just have to dry off this front bit first and then i'll, I'll show you how i get in a few more little bits and pieces Okay, so this bit does look slightly flatter, so I can actually pick up some more paint. And um, yeah, again, we can pick out a few, like for example, this block, we might want to darken that block, that, that side. It could be even a, a stronger shadow pattern running through and this mix, indicate that. But um, yeah, just picking out a few blocks that you want to darken, especially because we've got objects and things which are closer to the front of the scene. So it does certainly help to outline a bunch of them. That. Mm. I don't want to overdo it though, but I'm sure you get the idea. Just something like this, a bit, of, a bit more English red, or maybe these ones here. Bit of neutral tint as well, section there. Um, 
Then I'll pick up that this brush, this little this little um, fan brush again, and we'll use this. Okay. Um, oh, there's been a few little few little replies. Um, haven't read the chats for a bit. Um, Denerida, is this is this in Melbourne, Victoria? Uh, you mean the event? Oh yeah, uh, the 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 um the photo. Yes, it is. Yeah, this is in um. Where is it? Where is it? It's in um. I've got to pick up my phone and I've got to pick up my phone and have a look. Um. East East Melbourne somewhere. I think it's past Richmond. Yeah, I've forgotten the suburb. Uh, Paddy, um, Paddy Marion. Um, says hi from uh, NC, New York City. See you, uh, Patty. And we've also got Brenda Fuller from SC. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the the, the uh, where these dates are sometimes. So, um, but welcome and thanks for coming along. Don says not sketching or painting today, but noticed you live. So enjoyed seeing you develop this project. Uh, excellent. Thanks. No worries, Don. Um, yeah, I. Yeah, I, I just wanted to 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 turn the camera on. I'm going to be doing the sketching anyway, so I thought it would be nice to just share what I was doing. It's not so common. I think three times a week is a bit much, but um, uh, yeah, it's actually been quite fun. So the shadows you always give it. Uh, the shadows give it depth. Uh, watching today from New South Wales. Yeah, narrators. Um, I find you're really good at at your shadows, and um, you're very brave, especially just putting in. Um, areas of darkness in your in your uh, paintings every time you upload something i see it's uh that same sort of effect which is which is really good um i think people struggle with that um getting in that first wash is is uh you know they're fine with it but getting that second wash in it's difficult and uh, where you're putting the shadows and don says from little rock arkansas um lucia's from romania Awesome. And we've also got Neil Townsend from Northeast Vic. Came in late too, but uh, love watching and learning. Awesome. And uh, most welcome to, to, to watch long. And you can rewind it later if you if you um, need a bit more time, uh, obviously. Um, let's have a look. Is there any more? Um, Yvonne. Uh, Look, yeah. Yvonne says, um, Michigan, it's about 10 p.m. on YouTube. Mm. Maybe bedtime soon, eh? Yvonne says, thanks so much, Darren. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you, Yvette. And um, uh, two American ones says, uh, love it. Enjoyed it very much. Thanks. Awesome. Appreciate it. Um, appreciate you all being here. And um, I hope to see you again next time. I'll show you one really quick thing that you can do um, just before you, you head off as well, because I've almost forgotten. But um, so we can get in some dark areas, for example, here, right? So for some of these bits of um, this is going to make it look a bit less flat, I suppose, where we've got some larger bits of grass and things just growing up, growing through here. Yeah. Um, but also what I tend to do is that I, I will pick up a bit of the greens and mix it with some gouache, with a bit of white gouache. Um, and I'll show you what that does. It basically allows you to get in some little, see here, just some little white highlights or some um, areas of grass here on that right hand side um, that cut through the, uh, yeah, just, a lot of this stuff here so um, it's another little trick that you can um, play around with and it again adds that another layer of detail over the top and you can do it here especially with really dark sort of spots like this as well where you're lacking um, a bit of contrast and a bit of you know shrubs and things like that that you might want to put in um, add in a little bit of gouache to your paint and then start Go over the top. I mean, I can even do it here. Do a few little strokes here in the foreground, like that. Okay, that kind of blend in it. It might just look. It kind of implies that maybe it's catching a bit of light or something like that. So, um, that's pretty much a, about it. So, 
Now, thank you all for joining. See you next time, um, Wednesday. And um, oh, and uh, thank you very much.